which, which should be... Hi, we're currently in the slums in Karibi, Nairobi, Kibera. Kibera. And we're gonna do the monthly news update uh, in here. Ah, okay. Thank you. Welcome to our fourth monthly news update. As always, it's gonna be super quick, rough and unpolished. Maybe a little bit more this time because we're currently in Kenya, so this is one big improvisation. So I hope it's all clear. And thanks for Klimbera for hosting us in his little workshop. Let me show you. <laughs> So we're currently in Kenya with United Nations to set up a precious plastic pilot. We're gonna do it in a city called Kisi because we share all the drawings to make these machines to recycle plastic online. But setting up a workspace requires a little bit more. You need a space, you need to collect, you need to sort out your plastic. So we want, a few, we want to do a few of these pilot projects around the world to learn from that and also share again all of everything what we learn into blueprints so you can easily start your own little shop anywhere in the world. So we're currently here together with Mattia and Emil and we've got two weeks to transform this old milking shed into a precious plastic workspace and we brought our starter kits from the Netherlands with the most crucial parts and the rest we're gonna source and make here locally. And here's a little clip to show you what we've been doing. So we're currently on our way to Kenya with uh, a stack of luggage which are the precious plastic starter kit and we're gonna transform this shed into a workspace. Yeah, this shed, three people, two weeks. Let's see, <laughs> let's see what we can do. Still some work to do. <laughs> Ooh, long way ahead. <laughs> We got work to do. Looks like paradise. <laughs> so we're currently in Nairobi getting our material. Here's Emil. <laughs> And uh, it's an impressive place. So Emil, why do you work on fresh plastic? <laughs> no, look, there's a lot and lots and lots of fresh. Check out the uh, I'll straight the beam here, okay see? Whoa. <laughs> That's what we're working with. <laughs>
next level plastic bubble. <laughs> ready painting is going on huh? start collecting some plastic Emil is looking at it we have a guy welding the frames at his welding machine that looks super safe shredder there slowly coming together Still a bit rough here and there. Here we have Mattia. Hey, hello. Hello. Come together. Mattia, come together. She really wanted to be in the video. Say hi, smile to the camera. <laughs> hello, Aki. Alright, you're in. <laughs> Making electricity. Painting logo on the wall. Good job. <laughs> Alright, a few more days. And then uh, you will see the end result in another video. So those were two super intense weeks. We set up this whole workshop, built the machines and teach locals how to work with plastic and how the machines work. Because we want to make sure that if we are gone, they can still run the workspace without having us around. Super thanks for everyone that helped out with the project and the locals to really set it up and continue from here. We, we're gonna make a super nice video of this whole project. For now, it's just a rough version, but it's gonna take a while before we narrow it down. But that video will come soon. Now, another thing I always like to do in these places is go to a landfill. And usually I go there, my feet, so flip-flops, uh, just walking around to seeing it. But this time we bought a drone, and it's impressive to see if you fly up how giant these landscapes with trash are. I mean, if you look around, it's, it's everywhere. And I guess for us it's always a good motivation, knowing that there are many of these places around the world with so much plastic trash. It's good for us to know that we're not done yet. Fresh plastic still has some work to do. Back in the Netherlands, we were featured in an episode of Tegelicht, where they came to a workshop to show a little bit what we're doing. If you want to see more of that, it's in Dutch, but it gives a glimpse of the workspace. Link below. We got 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Not sure if that's really news, but seems worth noting. And Joey is doing a big research on PET bottles. We're trying to find ways how to use them without fully completely shredding and remelting them, but trying to use as much of the original shape and material as possible. Hey Joey. Hey. Hey, could you show us your PET research? Yes. Good. So about this PET research, we try <laughs> to um, use the shape and the property of the bottle. So for the first step of the experimentation, I tried to focus how to get a string from the bottle. So uh, I did different kind of plastic bottle cutter that you can easily find on, the, on YouTube, on the internet, to get this kind of string. And then from this string, uh, I tried to do some basketry because I think it could be an easy way to get some uh, strong uh, object and very light, so it could be interesting. Um, in a second hand, um, I work with a very funny and uh, powerful technique that That's I can cool. show you yeah. if you are ready for this. Okay, it's very simple from this bottle. I will get the bottom. <laughs> Then try just have to put your shape inside and it's a bit like vacuum forming process but in the DIY way. And here we are.
smooth. Ta-da! Like a new shape. Yeah. So yeah, I tried different sh shape with this process to get flat stuff, more round circular stuff. So yeah, finally we managed to to get this kind of thing, more like finish with the uh, packaging, for instance. Oh, I got this uh, phone case, which is also interesting. Um, we started a new topic on the forum about PET bottle. So if you have some other ideas about objects we could make, feel free to share it and we'll work on it longer together. <laughs> yeah, because it's a super nice technique, right? A lot of, we need to find a good application. Yeah, absolutely. Super easy to do. So yeah, get your imagination going. <laughs> So if you have any good applications or things you can do with these techniques, let us know in the forum, link is below. So that's all the news we got this month, but there's also been a lot of happening in our community. So here we have community news. The guys from Circle Activity in South Korea, they already had a super nice workspace and building the precious plastic machines, but now they also built this mobile version where they can drive around the city making lamps with our extrusion machine. Super nice. Finbok, an NGO from Uganda, made our injection machine from wood. Naga Karta in Cambodia started a crowdfund to set up their little factory. And they, they just keep on going and building the machines one by one. So we're probably going to see more of them in the coming months. Some students in France are playing around with the extruder machine and this robot arm, uh, trying to make bigger, more architectural shapes on a bigger scale. Interesting to see what comes out of there. I met Isabe from Denmark went to Cape Town to teach locals how to build the machines, how it works with welding and electronics, and also how it to work with plastic. And they've been making these flower pots, but looking into more molds in the future. So this is a glimpse of all the stuff that happens in the community. If you want to see more, go to our online community and we write out little blog posts and pictures about all the projects they are doing. So that's it for this month's updates. Thanks for watching and here's a little clip. I often say, Thank you guys in these monthly news videos and it might sound like it's from me but it's actually not just me that you're supporting but the whole community behind this project or all the projects so this is a thank you not from me but from everyone here thank you